In this presentation, we will calculate the allowance for doubtful accounts and the bad debt expense using the percentage of revenue method. So first, let's consider what we're doing here, why we're doing it, and the two methods that we can use to do so. We're, we're looking at the accounts receivable account and the revenue account. And we can consider the problem with accounts receivable or sales on account, sales on credit, in two different ways. We can think of it in terms of the balance sheet problem, where we focus in on the accounts receivable, or we can focus in on the income statement problem, where we focus in on revenue. Now, as we focus in on either side, we're gonna fix the other side to some degree, because when we make a journal entry, it's gonna be the same journal entry, meaning, or the same accounts, although the dollar amount may differ between the two methods and the estimates used. The uh, two accounts will be a debit to bad debt expense and a credit to the allowance for doubtful accounts. It's just the method we're gonna use that will make the difference here. So are we gonna focus more on the problem on the income statement or the problem on the balance sheet. What are these two problems? Well, uh, if we look at the balance sheet, then we could say, well, this accounts receivable account showing 1,146,300 is necessary for us to have on the books when we uh, give this information to creditors because they want to know that number. However, it's going to be overstated to the degree that there are some accounts we're not going to get paid with. So we need to figure out how much of we're not going to get paid for and make some type of estimate for that. Now to make the estimate, we can't just reduce this accounts receivable account because we don't know who's going to pay us. It's just an estimate. So we know that based on past history, some people aren't going to pay us, but we don't know who. Therefore, we can't go to the subsidiary ledger over here and choose which of these uh, individual, that's down here, which of these individual customers will not pay us. And so that means we can't really reduce the receivable itself. And we wouldn't really want to either because we want to give our, our reader more information than that. We want to say, hey, this is how much is owed to us. And this is just an estimate. And the difference between these two then is the net receivable we believe we're going to get paid. That's going to be the balance sheet side that we need to do something about that we need to solve for. The income statement side has a problem as well, however. And that's the fact that this revenue account, any revenue account that we made sales on account for credit going through accounts receivable then, are uh, revenue accounts that, again, we might not get collection on. Meaning we made the sale here on account. If we never get cash, then it's kind of like that sale never happened. It's not a real sale if we're never gonna get paid on the sale. So we should reduce the sales in a perfect world by the amount we're not gonna get we never reduce revenue typically, so we're going to make an expense called bad debt expense. And rather than us waiting to uh, determine that something is uncollectible on the receivable side and then recording the bad debt expense on the income statement at the point in time it is uncollect uncollectible, the direct write-off method, non journal accepted accounting method typically, we want to estimate because that wouldn't be good matching. That would be writing off bad debt for sales that happen prior to this. It wouldn't be matching up these sales this month, this year, with the bad debt expense. So what we're trying to do here is figure out how much of these sales are going to be uncollectible. If we use the method before we talked about figuring out the allowance for doubtful account, then this, this side will kind of fall out and it'll be okay, but it's not really focusing on this account. If we focus on this side then, rather than using the accounts receivable focusing on the balance sheet to make the adjustment we will focus here on revenue and we'll say okay how much of that revenue that we made on account will be uncollectible based on past experience or industry standards and by focusing on revenue here we'll still make the same journal entry and and do something to the allowance account but our main focus will be on revenue and it should be you would think more accurate than on the uh, revenue side we should be getting this revenue side more accurate the two methods in a perfect world would come up to the same number, but they pretty much never will. Uh, on, on the two estimates, they're both going to be estimates focusing on, you know, the different side of this journal entry. So under the under this method, we're focusing more on the revenue side. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say that 3% of the revenue is uncollectible. Now, we could have much more complex methods than that. Uh, we, we, you know, we could try to determine how much of the 
receivables were on account clearly we don't really want to count cash sales and maybe even how much is still out there but for most book problems and this from a pretty simplified method and typically the method being more simplified in any case than the receivable method where we typically have an aging process uh, we're just going to take the percentage of sales for that reason for one the reason that I think most people typically focus on the balance sheet and let the income statement kind of uh, um, fix be fixed by the fixing of the balance sheet and two because it's a bit more complicated for book problems and therefore they concentrated on more uh, you're probably going to see the the accounts receivable method percentage of receivable method used more often to calculate allowance and bad debt but note that um, the sales method is uh, usable and uh, it's it's there and it it's no it's good to know because it emphasizes this other factor the the, um, the fact that uh, uh, we have this other matching problem on the income statement it's not just the not just the balance sheet problem we have okay so if we do this we're going to just take that 378 times three percent so we'll do that with our formula right here I'm going to be in uh, D um, D11 D21 and just say this equals 378,000 times 3 percent 0.03 and that's it so I'm just gonna take our if we did that of course in the calculator it's just the 378 that times 3 percent or 0.03 giving us that 11,340 that's gonna be the debit to bad debt expense so I'm gonna copy bad debt expense we're gonna put that in C21 right click and paste one two three we're going to credit something for that same amount. I'm going to do that with our credit plug formula, negative of that number. So I'm just going to put the brackets around it, and that will be going to allowance for doubtful accounts. So we'll copy the allowance for doubtful accounts, right click and copy. We're going to put that here in C22, right click and paste, one, two, three. There's our journal entry. Note how, how much simpler it is here uh, because what we're not doing as we do in the allowance method is concerning ourselves with what's already in the allowance account it doesn't matter because we're focusing on getting this side right and this side doesn't have what's in the allowance account already in there note that the allowance account what's already in there represents an error in some ways from prior estimates so what we're not doing is letting the prior estimates mess up our current estimate for this time period we're making our current estimate for the matching principle based on just the revenue number, not based on trying to kind of fix the, the past error from this uh, you know, um, receivable or allowance, which wasn't exactly right. And it's never gonna be exactly right because it's just an estimate. So, that's what so we don't have to do any kind of subtraction. It is what it is. We'll just base it on revenue and then whatever happens to the allowance account happens. So we're gonna record that. So here's the bad debt expense. It's gonna be the second to last account on the trial balance and therefore, the second to last account on the uh, general ledger so let's find it we got the assets the liabilities which we have none the equity and the revenue and the, here's the bad debt expense so we're in AA9 AA9 we're gonna say equals we will scroll back over and we'll scroll back down and obviously you can use the, the, the bars here any other method to roll back over but we want to pick up D21 and enter so there we have it, increasing that to 11,340. That 11,340 then appearing on the trial balance. We're out of balance by the 11,340 until we record the allowance for doubtful accounts, which is what the third account on the trial balance and therefore third account on the general ledger. Here it is, the allowance for doubtful accounts. We want to be on the credit side. I'm in cell T13, T13. This equals, we're going to scroll back over scroll back down and pick up that 11,340 and enter. So it's going to go up from that 15,003 by the 11,340. Remember it's a contra asset account going up in the credit direction, a little bit unusual for an asset account. And that's the 26,640 which we also see on the trial balance. Therefore, the difference between the 1,146,3 and the 26,640 is 1,119,660. We are decreasing, note, the amount of the net receivable here on the balance sheet side, although the focus is down here 
on the income statement side where we decreased net income. We had revenue here, we're subtracting out that revenue, matching this actual bad debt to that revenue, even though we don't know who's not gonna pay us, we're using an estimate to try to match that up to the same time period in accordance with the accrual matching principle to bring net income down. This is still income, which is credit over the expense of 366,660.